Hi everyone, uh, this is Andreas and uh, welcome to this quick and easy tutorial on using Aragon. So if you've ever wondered how decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs uh, work and how you can deploy one um, and you're curious about managing one yourself, uh, you're in the right place. So by the end of this video, you'll know how to set up your own DAO on Aragon and start experimenting with decentralized decision making. So first of all, let's quickly go over what Aragon is. And it's a platform that lets you create and manage DAOs. And uh, think of a DAO as a digital organization run by smart contracts, where decisions are made democratically by members. So whether you're planning a, you know, a project or even a startup, uh, Aragon can help make everything more transparent and fair in the, in the spirit of blockchain and decentralization. And for this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and uh, cover the creation process of a DAO. So our final step will be the deployment step. And um, from there, please feel free to explore even more, join the platform. And I'm sure you're going to go ahead and learn a lot from this tutorial. So uh, let's begin. Uh, we're going to go ahead and visit the website, which is argon.org. And as you can see in this first page, uh, there are many different decentralized protocols that actually utilize Aragon for their DAOs, for the deployment and management of their DAOs. So uh, you probably recognize Polygon, of course. Um, maybe you recognize Lido Finance or maybe even Curve Finance, which we mentioned in our latest session, our presentation on DAOs. And yeah, let's go, let's go ahead and, and begin the process. So we'll click here on Create DAO. And for this one, I will uh, I will go ahead and choose MetaMask, um, choose MetaMask to, to to connect to Aragon. But of course, please feel free to use any wallet that you prefer. Um, let me also remind you that we have a tutorial on deploying a Rabi wallet. And yeah, please feel free to use whatever is comfortable. I will go ahead and connect with MetaMask. And of course, I will click connect. And yeah, we're in, as simple as that. And in order to build our DAO on Aragon, there are very, very simple steps that we need to, you know, to go through. And these are four steps. So first of all, we select the blockchain. Uh, then we describe our DAO. Then we define the membership. And finally, we select the governance settings. So four simple steps. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, and go through them one by one. So let's continue. Let's go ahead and click on build your DAO. First step, we select the blockchain network that will support it, um, support our DAO. So the chain that we choose is where our tokens and assets will be stored. And of course, if we already have a token, we choose the appropriate chain where our token is minted on. But this cannot be changed later. And this is pretty much the only thing that can't be changed later through voting. So it's super, super important that you choose the, the chain that you prefer. Um, as I said, I'm going to stop in the deployment step for this one, but I will choose, you know, the Sepolia testnet uh, to support the DAO. Second step, we describe our DAO. So this is where we give the, we choose the name of our DAO and we define it. So new, new voters, new contributors know that you know, they want to support it, they know they want to join. So this information is displayed on the DAO Explore page and it's very, very important. But this, uh, on the other hand, can be changed through voting. Um, I'll go, go ahead and, and choose the APD DAO for, for the name. And there is also the option to, to give our DAO a logo. And this is very, very important. You need to also um, input a description. So this is what people will read in order to understand what the DAO does and what its function is. But since, since this is a, you know, a tutorial and a test, I will just go ahead, ahead and type APD for the summary. And also in this step, there's also the option to input different links. So if I really had a, a DAO, a, you know, I mean a website or social media profiles, we could e use this, this section to, to link them. Uh, but I will go ahead and skip this one for now. Um, yeah, so we click next and we go to the third step where we define the membership. So this is 
where we decide the type of voting that the DAO utilizes. And this can also be changed with a vote, uh, but it's still a very, very important step. So first of all, we need to choose who can participate in governance. And there are two choices. We have token holders, which it's a very classic choice. So this is where tokens act as voting chips and the more token one holds, the more weight the vote has. So as it says here, one token equals one vote. And then we have the other option, which is the multi-sig multi -sig, uh, members. So this is a more permissioned, let's say, style of, of, of governance where only multi-sig members can vote. Uh, but for this option, I will go ahead and choose token holders. And then we need to choose um, if we have, if we already have a token and we don't. So I will click on no for this one. And since I clicked on no, on no, we need to also mint our token. So we give it a name, let's say APD token and a symbol. I'll go ahead and choose APD again. Uh, uh, and then we need to distribute the token that we're going to mint on the different wallets that will join the DAO. Um, but for now, we'll only choose my connected wallet, as this is an example, an editorial. And let's say we will allocate 10 tokens to my wallet. If we had even more wallets to add, as you can see here, uh, we could probably do a different allocation, but I will mint 10 tokens and provide them all to my address. And yeah, this is, this is it for this, for this step, which is the third step. We're going to go ahead and click on next. And these, this is the fourth step where we choose the governance settings for the DAO. So these are the rules that define how decisions are, are made within the DAO. It's also a very, very, very important step. And, you know, we choose, we choose, you know, things like how many people have to participate for a vote to pass or what the, what, what the support threshold is. And yeah, it's the first option. So let's go ahead uh, and, and explain it. So the support threshold is the, the percentage of tokens um, that need to vote yes in support of a proposal. So, um, Vote tokens, you know, they, they they correspond to voting power. So out of all the tokens that have voted, um, the 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 number must be greater than the value of the support threshold in order for the vote to pass. Um, and I will choose fifty five percent. So a little more than half uh, need to you know need to vote. A little more than half of the tokens. Then we have. Another very important option, which is the minimum participation. So this is the percentage of tokens that need to participate in the proposal and out of the, you know, out of the total supply of the token that we are meeting, the APD. So this must be greater than or equal to the value, equal to the value uh, for the proposal to pass. Uh, since this is also very, very important, I will go ahead and choose a number like 35. So this way we make sure that, you know, um, different people, if, if the tokens are allocated equally, let's say, um, we have many different people coming in to vote and actually a great number of people. And then we have the minimum duration. So this is the shortest period of time uh, a proposal is, is open for voting. And it's recommended that the minimum duration is actually a long enough duration so all the members or at least a majority of the members have time to vote. Uh, I will go ahead and choose, let's say, three days. So, yeah, if we choose a very small duration, then there's a chance that uh, members do not have time uh, to actually execute their vote. So it's important that we give them, a, you know, a long enough, a big enough time frame. Then there's this option, which is called early execution. So this option allows a proposal to be executed before the voting period ends, but if the support threshold is surpassed. I will actually go ahead and choose no for this one because I want to allow members of my DAO to actually change their mind or the, or the votes um, for the entire, entire voting period. So uh, this is, the, what I'm talking about is this next option, which is the vote change option. Uh, it allows voters to change their vote yeah, during the voter voting period, I will go ahead and choose yes for this one. And finally, 
uh, there's this option which is called proposal creation. We see this is where we specify who can create proposals. And for my DAO, uh, I will choose members. But if you want to make, you know, your own, you can choose uh, the option for any wallet to create proposals. And then minimum requirement, I will put three, let's say. So this is the fourth and final step and we will go ahead and click next and this final page uh, is where you double check everything and make sure it's correct before deploying the DAO um, so we will go through each step again very very quickly and make sure that our choices are the ones that we actually want so uh, for the blockchain we chose the Sepolia testnet on Ethereum it's correct and then we go ahead to the next step so we chose APD DAO for the, the DAO name. We chose APD for uh, a summary as an example. It's correct. We go ahead to the next step, which is the voters, the voter step. So eligible voters for our DAO are token holders. Our token is APD token, the one we want to mint. And we want to mint a supply of 10 APD. Um, for the distribution of this token, of course, we choose my address as I've only connected my wallet if we had mom, more members uh, we would of course choose another you know more addresses let's say we would distribute to more people and finally the for the proposal creations um, we need members with more or at least equal than three APD um, um, to to vote basically so yeah these values are also correct and finally for the voter voting parameters our support threshold, as we explained, is more than 55%. The minimum participation, as it, it as you can see, it translates to to tokens, so it's pretty much equal or more um, equal to or more than four APD. And the minimum duration for the voting period is three days. Um, and we opted for people to be able to change their votes. Uh, during the voting period. So this is also correct. Um, this is the final step. As I said, uh, I will stop this tutorial on this one. And I'm sure you can, after you create your DAO, if you're very interested, you can go ahead and explore the platform. So after we choose on, we choose deploy. Yeah, for now, my MetaMask wallet does not support the Sepolia testnet. Uh, but I, I'm pretty sure, I hope at least that you learned a lot from this. And uh, yeah, if you have any question on, on DAOs or you want to actually deploy your own and go ahead and, and, and go into the management aspects, uh, please feel free to contact me. I will be very happy to help you with that. And um, yeah, so this was pretty much it for this tutorial. And thank you very, very much for watching. And yeah, see you on the next ones.